Hello, and welcome back to this madness, also known as Space and Sky playthrough, where I can only use weapons, armors, and accessories related to space or the sky. Last time we beat Astrum Aureus, which gave us so many more options for many bosses to come. Not only is its treasure bag full of helpful items, but after its defeat the enemies of the Astral Infection get new drops, almost all of which I want. Also yes, I could kill the enemies themselves to get the weapons, but I like fishing better. Thanks to Aureus, I now have the Nebulash, Aurora Blazer, Stellar Knife, Star Cannon EX, Hive Pod, Starburster Core, and Celestial Duel. And while I do also have access to a few other things, I didn't get them. Now, let's move on to a more important note. Up until now, the footage was recorded in Calamity's 1.4 update, but luckily I have the ability to continue this playthrough in 1.5, the Draiden update. Yes, that does mean I have another Supreme Calamitous tier boss to beat, and I will hate it, but that's okay. The first thing I did in the new update was a bit of storage purging. Due to boss summons now being non-consumable and also no longer stacking, I had a lot of storage space being taken up by duplicate summons. There were also some items that I had that no longer existed in the mod, so I took those out too. With that out of the way, I wanted a wing upgrade that I forgot to get after Plantera, the, uh... The... Aureate. Boosters. But to make them, I needed perennial ore, so I ventured to the underground to get some. It was also at this point that I realised that my music was on, so now you are allowed to hear my game sounds again. With my new wings crafted, I realised that there was also a shield that I could craft that would let me dash, the Asgard's Valor. Due to its name being the Asgard's Valor, I asked the Discord no-hitters whether that would be enough to validate it for this challenge, but the general consensus was no. That's a shame. I also tried to beat Aureus again, but this seems like a no. Although Golem would be the ideal next boss to defeat, I wanted to try a Lunatic Cultist. He's usually a very easy fight, but there was a bit of a problem. Lunatic Cultist got buffed in the Draden update. Buffed so much that, with my gear, I stood not a chance against him. His attacks compared to pre-1.5 are much faster and require quick movement to dodge, namely the Ancient Light and Ancient Doom attacks. Without good DPS or a dash, I didn't stand a chance. Unfortunately though, I could only solve one of those problems, so I decided to bite the bullet and get some upgrades. Since my armor set was rogue-based, I went to the dungeon to retrieve the Heavenfall and Star Disk, contained in the Astral Biome chest. The chest unlocks after the defeat of Aureus, and contains a really solid rogue weapon. The only reason I didn't get it immediately after killing Aureus is simply because I forgot. Although the disc was strong, it wouldn't be my weapon of choice against Lunatic Cultus due to its lack of homing, and so I started the long and tedious task of collecting materials to create a summoner loadout. I mean, if I can't aim, might as well get some summons to aim for me. First up on the long, long list of gear I will need is the Necromantic Scroll from the Pumpkin Moon. Though the Pumpkin Moon is a, you know, moon event, there weren't any weapons from it that I could use. By the way, if you notice me moving vertically a lot while using the Heaven Fallen Star Disk, that's on purpose. You see, it creates extra projectiles when hitting enemies, but with one specific condition. You have to be moving vertically both when you throw it and when it hits an enemy. Kinda weird, but I think it makes the weapon quite unique. Thankfully, this chad of a disc made mowing through the early waves a breeze, and after, quote unquote, no time at all, the necromantic scroll was mine. I didn't need anything else from the event, which I've already said, but I grinded it out until morning because why not? A little bit of extra money never hurt anyone. With the Necromantic Scroll collected, I travelled to the jungle for the Witch Doctor to get all those cool summoner accessories, went to the Hallow to get some pixie dust, which took forever, and killed some walls of flesh to get the summoner emblem, also took forever. All this effort was worth it because with all my ingredients I collected, and a few cores of sunlight to make it valid for this challenge, the status's blessing was mine. Plus two minion slots, more minion damage, and a little bit of holy fire as well. This will be really helpful, for sure. Can't really take full advantage of it without any minions, though. 
For some reason I thought this minor upgrade would be enough for me to finally beat Lunatic Cultist and it wasn't, so I initiated the next step of my summoner shopping list. Kill Rock. Oh, but first, I totally forgot that due to the crafting recipe of Diaphic Amulet changing in 1.5, I technically would need to kill Astrum Deus before crafting it now. Since it was tier shifted and I had it before I could legitimately get it in this new update, I stashed it away for now. I can just pick it back up later once I kill Deuce. Sorry, if I kill Deuce. Okay, back to killing Rock. I mean Golem. Unfortunately, Guess who else was buffed in 1.5? His fists are faster, he falls faster, he uh... Actually, I don't know if he's changed in any other way, but I like to Lunatic Colsus, it's not necessarily a free fight anymore. Can I just say that I loathe not having a dash? I know I keep on mentioning it, but it's really getting on my nerves. Despite me saying that Golem isn't really free, it was... uh... not hard. Now that he's dead, we have access to the Pixel, and thus we can mine Scoria Ore in the Abyss. That's actually not the only reason why I killed him though, but we didn't get the item miles after, so I killed him once more. Here it is, the Sunstone! We aren't going to wear it by itself, since it only gives stat boost during the day and that's too finicky, but we can use it to make something even better. Enter the Solar Eclipse. All I need from it is the Moonstone, dropped by vampires. Luckily my weapons are decent, otherwise this would have been much worse, but here it is, the Moonstone. Using the Sun and Moonstone I got the Celestial Stone, but to craft it into the Celestial Shell I need the Moon Charm, so I set myself up in the desert and mindlessly killed werewolves. And here we are, the Celestial Shell. This is one of the best accessories I could hope for in a challenge run like this. Across the board stat increases, to suit my use of no specific class, and it even gives a bit of defense and life regen. Needless to say, I won't be taking this accessory off. Ever. You thought the grinding for gear was over? Martian Madness is next, mainly for the Zeno stuff from the Martian sources. I'll cut this short because, you know, it's Martian Madness. You are doing one of two things at any given time in the event. You sit in box or you perish. Anyway, we got the staff so that's good. Very good summon weapon, though of course there's better, but we'll just have to work with what we've got. Shopping list is almost complete, two things left to get, Scoria Bars and Nuclear Rod. Nuclear Rod is locked behind Aquatic Scourge, so I beat him up, but now I need to do the Acid Rain event. Why is it always events? First Acid Rain, the enemy that drops the Nuclear Rod didn't even spawn, so I got the Scoria Bars I needed before starting another rain. But of course, I didn't want to go through the cancer that is Acid Rain, so I just fished for it. Fishing is good, I'll never stop saying it. None of the crates had the rod. Okay, guess I'll just do some more Acid Rain grinding. Finally. Okay, Scoria Bars for life aloes, and we should have everything we need. Oops, I need Voltaic Jelly too. Okay, we have everything we need, and now we have another summoner accessory, Star Tainted Generator. Two more summon slots, some more summon damage, some debuffs, and our minions spawn little explosions. After all this time, after all this grinding, we should be all set. Lunatic Cultist is going down. Two attempts in and I realized that I could do with some health boosts. I need two extra life fruit as well as the blood orange and miracle fruit. Luckily I had most of the materials in my storage so they weren't much of an issue. 
Since I was using summon weapons and my armor set was only benefiting rogue damage, I tried out reaver armor instead, which, with 1.5, got overhauled into a whole different thing. Rather than being class specific, it has three different set bonuses to choose from. One for exploration, one for tanking, and the other for movement speed. I chose movement speed because I don't have a dash. Did I mention I don't have a dash? I don't have a dash. Though the Xeno staff is good, the summons are dumb and don't attack things unless you are super close, which is just typical of the summoner class. On a whim, I decided to revert back to Rogue and use the Fantasy Talisman. Although the Talisman themselves don't home, the projectiles they spawn on hit do, so I figured it was worth a shot. This was my first attempt with the Fantasy Talisman. Either the Talisman are really good, or I'm just really lucky. Anyway, it's Celestial Pillars time! Although the Pillars will never not be grindy and full of death, in this playthrough they are crucial. The fragments they give, Solar, Vortex, Nebula and Stardust, are all valid space and sky themed crafting materials, thus validating all items that are crafted with them. However, seeing how that would make basically the entirety of viable weapons against Moonworld Valors for this challenge, I decided to give myself a restriction on weapons. No crafting recipe rule for weapons involving the fragments. They have to solely be space or sky themed. Luckily there still are plenty to choose from. Since I was running some summoner gear, I decided to kill the Stardust Pillar first to get the weapons, and also so I can craft the Status' Curse, though I didn't craft them immediately. At this point, summoner was my fallback plan against Astrum Deus, since there was a certain weapon that I knew would do wonders against it. The Star of Destruction. Of course though, without a dash, I would have to get used to dodging attacks in a different way. Arena optimizations would help with that. Though the Star of Destruction is good, and with my rogue armor set it gets boosted damage, after a while I figured I might as well get the summoner upgrades. It's not like the upgraded gear is going to lower my DPS. Astrum Deus still stood in my way, so I went right back to doing more attempts. The access to Astral Bars that its defeat unlocks is just too crucial for me to skip.
deuces down. That took longer than I thought it would. <laughs> but hey, I got the summon weapon. Now that I could acquire and use astral bars, I had a whole new armor set to craft. The Astral Armor is much more freeing than the Umbra File set, as it gives a big damage boost to every single class, as well as having much more defense. As well as the armor, the Hadarian Wings are now obtainable, which just so happens to give a movement speed boost when paired with the Astral Armor. Now that I had my armor and accessories, I just needed one certain weapon that I knew was very good against Moon Lord. Unfortunately, the materials for this weapon are not the easiest to get, mainly the snowman cannon dropped by Ice Queens. The grenade launcher also took longer than it should have to get. With all the components collected, we have our new weapon, the Scorpio. Not only is it a reliable homing rocket launcher, but it's named after a star sign, which I think is more than enough to validate it. After all this time, all of our hard work will pay off. It may not have been easy, and it's been a little grindy, but we've come this far, no going back.